and welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee and I'm the host for this program. Today we will be talking about Kupa'a Consulting Services, helping Hawaii repair and rebuild credit scores. Hey, on today's program, we are going to be talking about credit repair services, and I am honored to have the owner of Kupa Consulting Services, Rhonda Alexander Monkris, on the show. Rhonda, welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you, Kathleen. Happy to be here. Awesome. Tell our viewers a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born and raised on the island of Oahu, and then I relocated to Maui. I live in the country in Pukalani um, during my adult early adult phase of life. And um, I've worked in a variety of industries. And so I started off in hotels here on Maui, moved to Guam and Saipan, um, spent a lot of years traveling while out in Guam and Saipan, and then relocated back to Maui, uh, spent some time at Kamehameha schools. And then I was a HUD housing counselor. Um, and it was while I was a HUD housing counselor that I recognized and realized that members of our community needed help with credit. And that's how Kupa'o was born. That's wonderful. I had asked you this earlier before we started out. Tell us more about why you picked Kupa'a as a name that represents your company. Yes, I picked Kupa'a because it means, um, one of the meanings of it is to persist. And I felt that it kind of represented me as a person, whenever I went through any life challenges and different phases, I was always able to dig deep and persist and to move forward and to be able to realize the possibilities that lay ahead. And when I was evaluating, you know, what would be best with helping people with credit, Kupa'a is the foundation of it. You know, they they have to be able to look at themselves, look at their family situation, and have patience and be able to persist throughout the credit repair process. Let's talk about that. I, I love going back to basics with our guests on the show. So what is a credit score and why is it important for lows when it comes to you know housing i think that's one of the main ones that you want to focus on right is to help people um and like young individuals as well build their credit so what's a credit score absolutely so a credit score is what i often tell my clients it's an adult report card you know you thought you left high school and you weren't going to have grades anymore well when you enter into your adult phase of life, your credit score is kind of your report card on how you're doing with managing your finances. And to play the credit game, you just need to understand what it is that makes up your score and play the credit game the right way so that it'll benefit you and it'll benefit your ohana. And a credit score is made up of whether or not you have credit and credit is a credit card or a loan and whether you pay those things on time, so that's payment history. And if you have credit cards, whether you max out your cards or whether you use it wisely and you pay it down on a monthly basis. Um, so those are the main components of a credit score. So it's payment history, it's credit utilization, it's how many 10% um, of your score is increased. So how many times you apply for credit um, and then length of history. So have you had your credit uh, card or your loan for two years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years? All of those factors feed into the algorithm for calculating a number. So someone can have a credit score from 350 to 850. And the goal is, you know, of course, to, to get the best score possible. But the sweet spot is when you have a score of 740 to 760. 740 to 760 will allow you the freedom to be able to get the best terms when you apply for a loan and the best terms when you apply for a credit card and will also get your approval for those things. I thank you for going over that because I, I like how you talked about the sweet spot as well. I know some individuals out there 
um, may believe that it's better off to not have a credit card right, to not have certain loans. Um, what do you make of that thought? Why is it better to have credit cards to build one's credit score? Because the the bureaus that calculate the score um, utilize the amount of credit lines that you have on reporting to the bureaus. And so if you only have one credit card and you don't use it, you don't have any loans, you're pretty much not going to have much of a score because they don't have anything to measure how much of a risk you are for any banks or lenders to allow you to borrow money. So what you're doing is you're trying to show that you're responsible. You're responsible because, you know, you have other people who have given you credit and given you a loan and you've been able to show a history of being able to pay on time. And your credit limits, because of being a responsible credit user, has increased progressively over time. And that's what you want to be able to show to get that sweet spot credit score of 740 to 760. So banks use credit scores to determine what type of risk you are and whether or not they want to approve you for a home loan, for a car loan, for a personal loan, for a personal line of credit, or for a HELOC. Okay, so let's start with um, how one would, because one of the main things that you help out with is for people to rebuild their credit. How would one go about that if they have a score that's less than, I think you mentioned this sweet spot was 740 and below, right? So what would be one of the first steps that you typically recommend to individuals, especially those that are not too versed with how to go about in raising the credit score? I think the first thing is check your credit report, um, you know, before I get into the credit building steps. So oftentimes we, you know, may go through life and not check what's reporting until we're ready to go and apply for something and we get denied. And then we don't know why we're getting denied. Uh, we receive a letter that says you're denied because, you know, you have too much um, late payments, or you have derogatory marks on your credit, or you don't have any credit. Um, so everyone can check for their credit, re what's on their credit report at annualcreditreport.com. And you can do that for free every year, once a year. During COVID, people were able to do it on a weekly basis. So that's annualcreditreport.com. And you do it three times. You check one for TransUnion, one for Experian, and one for Equifax. Um, you can sign up for credit monitoring software, which some of them are free and some of them, there's a fee. So that fee could be anywhere from $14 to $50 a month for the credit monitoring software. When you sign up for a credit monitoring software, then you get an actual score. Annualcreditreport.com, you don't get a score. You just get the details of what accounts are reporting. So to build credit, if somebody doesn't have credit or if they need to rebuild credit, um, there's two things I usually recommend to clients of Coupa. One is to sign up for the SELF program. So the SELF program is a savings program. You can sign up online um, within five minutes. It costs $9 to sign up. And you commit to putting $25 a month for a period of 24 months into a savings account. It reports to all three bureaus, which is what you want. You want, you want whatever credit you have to report to all three bureaus. Um, for that entire 24 months, you set it up on automatic payment. And doing that for three to six months in time, you'll see that your score is gonna go up anywhere from 25 to 50 points just by having that. The second one is to set up for um, to apply for a credit builder card. So the one I like to recommend is Capital One. So they don't do a credit pool. You can go onto their website. You can click on the criteria that says no annual fee. You know, you don't need a credit card that has an annual fee. Um, and credit builder. And then if you don't have any credit history, you might have to put like $200 down on the card for it to be a secured card then you put one thing on there. Um, nowadays, all of us have subscriptions to something. So if you have a subscription to Netflix, which is about 20 bucks a month, 
Hulu, $12 a month, some sort of Apple su subscription that's, you know, seven to $8 a month. Just put that on that one card and set it up on auto pay. And now you're setting up payment history. You're showing that you're buying something on the card. So you're a user of the credit. You're paying it on time. Um, and over time, your credit score will start, start to build. So for my son, who's um, 19, him and his cousin, I um, when they turned 18, I started them on the credit builder program. So set them up with the Capital One card. They had to find the $200 to put on the card, right? That's the responsible thing to do for them. Um, he signed up for sell. I added him on as an authorized user to my and my husband's credit cards. And, and we had, you know, so you want to be added on as an authorized user to someone who has excellent credit history, somebody in your family, auntie, uncle, grandma, friend, neighbor, somebody. We did not give him the card. He did not get any one of our credit cards and he understood it. And within six months time, his credit score was at 800. So it went from zero to 800. So then at that point, he was able to put in and apply for a loan and get qualified for a car loan, which, you know, at 18 years old, that's that's an important life milestone in their eyes. <laughs> and he's very lucky to have you <laughs> to <laughs> have him go through that process. I think that's actually pretty, uh, it's a great reminder that you mentioned that because I I think I may need to do that as well. Put my subscriptions on my cards because I have it directly onto my debit cards. Earlier, you mentioned um, COVID and, and I, I've discussed, I, I try to bring in how the pandemic has affected people. When it comes to your business, how did COVID affect people and their credit scores and the type of clientele that you were getting? Well, it, 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 it's sad and it's tough because COVID was unexpected, you know, who of us knew that people would not have income anymore? And you had all of this debt that you had a system with, right? That you were able to make payments on a monthly basis. And um, so, yeah, clients did come in where they had accounts that went into charge off or collection status. Um, and they weren't sure how to approach it and what to do about it. They had cars that were repossessed um where they co-signed for loans for people that they were no longer associated with anymore but they're still responsible for the loan um for people who ended up separating because of the life struggles and challenges just ended up to be a stressor on their relationship and so all of those joint accounts that they had each person is responsible for for it no matter what um, a divorce decree or an agreement may say about your, you know, person A is responsible for this car loan, person B is responsible for this personal loan. If the other person doesn't pay it, it still impacts person B's credit report and credit score. So all of these different examples is what I saw for clients that have been coming in trying to clean it up. So what we do at Kupa is we take a look at it, we do a free credit audit, we put together some strategies um, for everyone, strategies they can do on their own um, through credit education and some of the tips I shared earlier about building credit and then strategies that we can do using Kupa and our Done For You program. Let's go over some of the um, tips that you had, or maybe more tips that you can offer. So you mentioned that a lot of people did go through hardships during the, the pandemic, and mm -hmm. hardships translate to derogatory scores on one's credit report. Um, when you see that on there, how does one address that, contest that, get it off the report? Where does one start? Yeah, so you start with the, pulling your credit. Then second, you take a look at what items are on there, if they don't look like an account that you recognize and you're uncertain of, then my suggestion is to put things in writing. I hear a lot of clients that come forward that say, well, I called them, I spoke to them, and I say, okay, when did you speak to them? What was the date? What was the time? Who did you talk to? Always put everything in writing. I know the um, 
the desire is to try and take care of it right away. And you can do that through a phone call. You know, it feels like it's quicker and you're going to get it done. But I find that a lot of people who did things by phone, they don't have records of anything. And so they don't have any proof or evidence to give to the bureaus to say, hey, Representative XYZ from Capital One Credit Card, I spoke to them, they told me it was going to be updated and they didn't update it. And so always do everything in writing is my first recommendation. Um, and always request for a response in writing um, with Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. If you have logged in and created online accounts, they now have your email. So even if they received a letter in writing from you, they're going to try and correspond with you by email. And their intention is to get you to respond back by email or to log on to their site and to, to put your concerns um, online through their website. So when you do that, the terms and conditions, when you check mark the box and say, I agree, you know, the one that we, that we don't even read normally, we just check mark it and move on. Um, with that, you're waiving your rights to use um, any sort of legal representative to assist you and agreeing to arbitration. So if I just want people to know that if if that's the route you want to go, then have at it. I usually tell people don't submit anything online, do everything in writing. Um, so that's the one thing that I would recommend for them is to to put things in writing and they can write different letters that aren't theirs. So if they feel that inquiries are on there that are not theirs, they didn't give authorization for it, then they can call um, the credit bureau's fraud line and they can also write letters to request for those unauthorized inquiries to be removed from their credit report. And then they can write and let them know what they think is wrong with the account that's reporting. So if the charge off is incorrect, the collection status is incorrect, the late payments are incorrect, then they can write to the bureaus to let them know that it's not correct and to please remove it or update it to positive. Rana, that's very valuable information, especially in this day and age where um, we have credit monitoring apps uh, or services that you know, that encourage people to do everything online. So I think it's very valuable for you to remind our viewers that the record keeping part of it is very crucial. Could you go over, and you you did it earlier, could you go over some of the services that Kupa'a Consulting Services offers to uh, the people of Hawaii? Yeah, so the first step is, you know, go to the website, click on the button that says get free audit. I mean, that everyone should do. Get the free audit. Let's take a look at your credit report together. Let's lay out those strategies. Um, then at that point, you can decide if you want to enroll in paid services or if you want to hold and consider it for later. So when you go through paid services, you're going to get undisputed amount of letters that are sent on a monthly basis. So the FECRA laws say that when the Bureau receives your dispute letter, by law, they have 30 days to investigate. So we got to wait for that investigation to take place. They contact the original creditors. The original creditors have the opportunity to respond. And then they usually respond to you in to the client in writing. And the client gets the response to me at Kupa. I take a look at it. And then we send out the next round. So the response could be an item was updated to positive, an item was deleted, or an item was verified. So in the next round, we're gonna request for a method of verification. Okay, if you're saying that this is verified, I wanna see your method of verification. Show us proof. And this is why credit repair works because we're consistent, we're persis persistent. We use a variety of different um, consumer laws to leverage to show that what's reporting, is it accurate and is it verifiable? And those are the things of the FECRA law that the the bureaus as well as the creditors must follow. All good points. What are some lessons that you've learned running your business that you would like to share with people? You gotta be persistent, consistent. You gotta find your tribe. 
um, that's going to help to elevate you, motivate you, support you. Um, and I think Pilina is important. You know, I am out and about building relationships with different lenders and why lenders, because lenders get people that come to them to apply for loans and they get denied. And most times the reason why they're getting denied is because of credit. Well, we're great referral partners um, because I can help fix the credit, send them back to the lender and the lender gets the loan and the client is able to get what they wanted, you know, initially to meet their family goals. Um, that's wonderful. And I know I, I love how you have your motto or what you would like to do as to um, is to help people achieve their goals to buy a rental or get a rental, buy a home, uh, get a personal loan or help young adults build their credit profile. On that last note, what is like a couple of things? What are a couple of things that you would like to tell young people who are building their profile? What I want to tell them is that, you know, you Take the time, just take a few minutes to learn the basics about credit and um, get a credit card. I know people say, don't get a credit card. No, get a credit card. Just use it for that one thing to show repeated use and on-time payment. Um, go out and either get a secured loan or sign up for self to start your credit building history because I am a believer that each of us who live here in Hawaii can continue to live here and can be a homeowner. And you're going to be able to do that by having a solid credit report and credit score. I like that. And, and I like how you have that as part of your goal. I think that's uh, like a, a larger one, right? Where we try to keep people here in Hawaii. So I really appreciate that that's part of your mission. Is there anything else that you would like to add that we have not gone over? Because I know, you know, credit reports, um, credit building and credit repairs, it, you can talk about it for days. But if you have anything else that you would like to add in the few minutes that we have left, what would you like to say? Yeah, I just that uh, I think people who feel that they don't have um, an option of what to do to fix their credit, they do. You know, don't feel defeated. For some people, it might take one to two years, but at least you're making progress and you're making forward movement, you know, and that's what you want to do. And I have some clients who have bankruptcy and repossessions on their credit report, and it took three to four months for them to make that mental shift to recognize and realize that the little bumps that we were getting in their credit score on a monthly basis and the one deletion here, the three deletions there, it all served as kind of a motivator for them that they were making the right decisions and putting their efforts in the right place to be able to get to where they want to go. And then connecting them with the right people, let's say if their goal is to buy a home, connecting them with the right lenders that are going to be supportive of their journey. Um, which so many great lenders are out there that are like, we all want to help our community to be able to get credit ready to buy a home. Like that's, that's, I'm passionate about it. That's my dream. That's my dream for my neighbors, for my friends, friends, for my nieces, for my nephews, for everyone. I think that's wonderful. And it's good. It's good for you to have that dream. So people could have someone to turn to you know, to have those dreams realized. Rhonda, if people would like to learn more about how to build or repair the credit or just have a credit coach, how do they get a hold of you? My phone number is 808-731-0752. They can uh, follow me on social media at Kupa Consulting. Um, and they can also go to the website, kupaaconsulting.com. So, you know, a couple of client success stories that I think might help others that are out there who may have, be in similar situations. I had a business owner who had a HELOC with the local, uh, who had um, a personal line of credit with the local bank. And during COVID, when their business shut down, they weren't able to make payments and they went into Fort Barrett. And so they were able to catch up. 
but the bank was still reporting that their payments were late for 28 months and it was preventing them from getting a HELOC that they needed. So within three months of service of writing letters, um, we were able to, to get all of the late payments removed and they qualified for the HELOC. You know, and then we had a big island person who also is a homeowner, was looking to get a HELOC, got denied. And they had a combination of a repossessed card that was inaccurate. They had late payments, charge-offs, and collections. After seven months of service and doing pay-for-delete arrangements for some of the collections, we were able to get them approved for their HELOC loan as well. Um, and then we have um, three clients who have graduated from the program and have since either bought land or purchased a home. So these are kind of the proud moments that we celebrate with our clients. Um, we call them our, our credit wins, right? So we celebrate with them and we cheer them on and then we bring in the next client and help them do the same. Rhonda, thank you for sharing that and for all you do in helping people in Hawaii rebuild and repair their credit. We've been talking with Rhonda Alexander Monkris of Kupa'a Consulting Services today. So thank you again for being on the show. And thank you as well to Think Tech Hawaii for making shows like this possible. Today we had Haley and Mike helping us out. Until next time, aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.